Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Ashley's Gaming, back with another video. Have you been watching some of my videos and you've been wondering how does this guy always run around with hundreds and millions of commas? Well, don't wait any longer. I'm going to share you my tips how you can make commas as well. I will be going over 20 different ways how you can make commas. Starting out with the beginner ways up until the advanced ways of making commas. You can make up to hundreds of millions of commas when you follow this guide. Stay tuned and if this video was helpful for you guys, leave a like down below and subscribe for more content. So let's get straight into this. So let's start out with some simple ways how you can make commas when you're new to the game or you are a returning player to the game. And you want to get some small amounts of commas that can help you progress a little bit faster. So first of all, and I mentioned this in my how to play Dofus in 2023 video, the most easiest way and the most plain and simple way how you can make commas, whether you're a solo account player or a multi-account player, it's achievements. Now as you see here, I have 21,000 achievement points, but when you're new to the game or a returning player, your achievements are probably on the low end. Doing achievements will grant you so much commas and also resources that can help you make commas. So I mentioned in one of my previous videos as well that each achievement that you unlock gives you raw commas. For example, this Kimbo uh, achievement gives you 28kk each. And on top of that, you get the resources, which are 66kk for a batch of 10. Now, when you start out in the game, I highly suggest just follow the quest line in Incarnum and then in Astrup. Do the Dofus quest lines, the Crimson quest line, the Emerald quest line. Do a lot of questing at your level. Then start the dungeon quest line. There are two dungeon quest lines, which I mentioned in my how to play in Dovus in 2023 video as well. It's the uh, the quest line that starts out at the field dungeon in Astrup and the one that start on the bottom left of Astrup as well. So if you are doing all these quests, all these dungeons at the level they are supposed to be done, you will be making a lot of commas as well. Because if you have something to work with, you can make even more commas and we will go over that in a second. So most of you guys know in Dofus you have professions. Now most of the professions that are in Dofus require a lot of investment. So it's not really a way of making commas when you're new to the game. In my opinion, professions are even a way of saving commas. So when you are a higher level, you have more commas to invest. You can, for example, invest in the maging professions. And that will save you commas when you're maging your own gear. But let's skip that for a moment. What professions are useful for the lower level? So when you're new to the game, I highly suggest to start out with the farmer profession. Craft yourself some bread. So let's go to the farmer so when you are new to the game, you can farm some wheat. When you get a lot of those, you can craft the incarnate bread and get your farmer up to level 10. From level 10 onwards, you're going to craft the sesame seed bread. And when you get to level 20, you can craft uh, these for 30 HP. It's very simple. Bread always sells. There are a lot of people like me who don't want to waste their time on crafting bread so they just go straight to the market and buy some bread sometimes not even looking at the average price even if bread is super expensive we will still buy it so if you are a low level just grind some resources and craft bread you can also use it for yourself when you're done with a fight get yourself some bread saving yourself some commas but this will give you a small amount of commas to work with when you're new to the game the second profession that I would suggest when you're new to the game is the hunting profession. Now you can see here, I don't even have it leveled up to level 200 all the way. But I still suggest it for a new level player. You can get yourself a weapon. I think there's even a quest in Incarnum that explains to you how the hunting profession works. And that will grant you a hunting weapon as well. You can fight monsters while using the hunting weapon. And you can drop meat. Use those meat to level up your hunting professions. And the higher you go, the more worthy those meats will become. Meat is also required for some quest lines, some crafts, and uh, also a lot of edibles. So when you get your hunting profession leveled and you are moving up the levels, get yourself a new weapon that of course has some stats on it. And get yourself the hunter stat on it. You can mage it on an item. And after that... You can drop meat from any monster that you fight as long as it's within the required levels. Tip number four is daily quests. Now, 
I'm going to be honest, I don't know a lot of daily quests that are left in the game because Ankama is removing them slowly one by one. Back in the day, she had a lot of daily quests that granted you 40kk each day you could do it. Some quests were even weekly. Um, I think a couple of years ago, Ankama reduced the amount of commas that you get from daily quests in half. So you're probably going to get like 20kk. I don't know the quest from the top of my head, but I know there are still some of them out there. You can check the Dofus Poodle in the Noobs website uh, and check for the daily quest and do them each day. Most of them are pretty easy, pretty quick, and they will grant you some nice amounts of canvas when you're starting out. And the last tip that I have for the beginner section is the Almanacs. If you go to minus 4, minus 24, you can go to the Almanacs temple, start out the uh, Dominacs questline. Almanacs is pretty simple. I think I explained that in some of my older videos as well. You go here, you get a daily quest that you can accept. You bring the NPC some of the resources that are required for that day. And then you like have to talk to an NPC, finish the quest. It's very simple, very quick. So in the last update, Dofus removed merchants. So in front of the temple, there are no merchant modes anymore. So keep in mind that you have to uh, go to Bonta or Brakmar and get yourself the required resources. Now, if you don't want to spend the time to uh, run around going to the temple, go back to Bonta, back to the temple, you can go to the Dofus website and go to game, go to almanacs. And then here it will say what the bonus for today is and what kind of resources are required to complete the quest. So for today, for example, you need 15 wild mint uh, and that will uh, complete the quest for you. You can also look ahead for the next days and see what kind of resources that you need for those. So a small bonus tip uh, for this is also you can uh, look ahead for the bonuses that are coming for example, here on March 1st, craftsmen save 50% of their ingredients when they craft items in the Brockmar area. So if you're planning to level professions or craft uh, gear, then you should wait until March 1st and craft the items in Bonta. It counts for all of the professions. So that's pretty nice. Uh, so you can plan things if you plan to level your farmer. Uh, plan to level your hunter you can grind those resources save them up in your bank wait for march 1st and then level your profession it's very simple you're gonna save yourself 15 percent and that way you can easily level your professions without spending a lot of money so up until now the tips that i mentioned you probably heard a thousand times but like i said we will go over to the advanced uh tips in a second the tips that i'm using for myself to make hundreds and millions of kamas stay tuned for that we will go over the intermediate section first these tips require you a little bit more of an investment a little bit more of a knowledge of the game probably maybe a team uh, but yeah let's go over the tips tip number six is the treasure hunts now you can start treasure hunts at a pretty low level i think level 20 already but the let's be honest you are not getting a lot of roses of sense when you're starting treasure hunting at level 20. um also to be able to beat the chest at the end you kind of need some decent gear so i would advise to start doing treasure hunts at level 60 or 80 not below that um keep in mind trash hunting can be very boring back in the days you could get into an aggro area and get four times the amount of uh chests that you could get normally but ankama uh, changed that there are no aggro areas anymore i think you could still get uh double the chest in cities like bonta and brakmar i'm not sure it's been a long time since i've done the treasure chest but when you're getting a little bit higher level, like 160, 180, or even 200, and you're playing a solo account, then I say treasure hunting is one of the best ways to make commas. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. Yes, it can be boring, but when you are dropping a lot of roses of sand, sometimes you even get a jackpot and you get thousands of them. Uh, and on the side of that, you're going to get the map fragments that are required to find wanted monsters uh or the totankaman tablets that you can need for the crimson dovers quest line you can also choose not to sell the roses of sands and keep them for yourself for when you are planning to do the crimson dovers quest line i don't know if they reduce the amount but back in the days you needed twenty thousand roses of sands uh so keep that in mind when you're doing these as well other than that back in the days when i started out this was a great way to make some starters money
Tip number seven is the wanted monsters. Now, I've mentioned this probably hundreds of times in my uh, achievement team making videos. And that is the wanted monsters. Now, back in the days, you could do doubles. And doubles were my main way of making combat. You could get doubloons, trade them for scrolls and sell them. You cannot get any doubloons for, from doubles anymore, which is sad. But you can still get them from doing wanted monsters. Now, I've completed all of them already so i don't think i can see the rewatch over here anymore but the wanted monsters are going to give you the plumes based on the level of the wanted monsters not only that the achievements also give you a lot of comments as well so for example this one gives you 80 kk i think the lower levels give you like 50 kk like this for example and i think the higher ones even give more uh for example this 87 kk so with the doubloons, you're going to your class temple in Ankama village. You're going to talk to the NPC over there, trade your doubloons for scrolls, and you're going to sell these scrolls. Now, I highly suggest not to buy the great or powerful scrolls, only buy the small and medium. Why is that? Because people are breeding for scrolls as well. And with breeding, they're going to aim for the powerful scrolls. And that's why the powerful scrolls are pretty low in price compared to the great. They are going to go small, medium, and then powerful. So never go for the great. The small and medium scrolls will give you a lot more kamas per doubloon compared to the powerful scrolls. So keep that in mind. And if you're having a team of, for example, four men, do these wanted quests on the entire team. You're going to get four times your reward and that adds up quickly. I can link down in the description below uh, a video I did last year where I spent 200,000 doubloons. I basically made a completely new team of four characters and did all of the wanted monsters that had a good value. So not even the low level ones, but only the higher level ones. I did all of them. I got a total of 50,000 uh, doubloons for each character. I spent them all on the small and medium scrolls. And at that time, the scrolls were worth a total of 80 million Kama. So imagine what you can do if you're having a four-man team. And when you're playing a solo account, you can just find the Ars monsters, then go to the recruitment channel, ask for help, and um, there's always people who want to help you beat the wanted monster, and you're going to get some nice Kamas as well. On the topic of searching, we go straight into tip number eight, and that is arch monsters. Now, I highly suggest anyone, especially when you're going to do treasure hunts, because when you're treasure hunting, you are going to move all over the map. Uh, get yourself some uh, soul stones, like you see here, for different levels. So you have the level 50 souls, level 100, 150, and the 1000. Now, these souls can be pretty expensive, and it is kind of an investment. You also need the soul capture spell, which you can get from doing the Quaqua Dungeon, which is pretty easy. But when you're running around the map, either questing, treasure hunting, looking for wanted monsters, and you have these souls on you... When you see an arch monster, and for those of you who are new to the game and who don't know what an arch monster is. So for example, I'm in the Kenya area, you have the monsters here. The monsters that have the blue flame on their head, those are called arch monsters. They have a special name like you can see here on screen. Uh, they are basically a stronger version of the uh, normal monsters in the area. And you need them for the eternal harvest questline. The Eternal Harvest questline is the questline that you need for the Ochre Dovus. Some of the Arsmonds that you find might only be worth like 50kk, but some are worth up to 800,000 Kama, so it can add up pretty quickly. If you find an arch monster, but you're not sure if you can beat it yourself, ask in your guild or alliance or ask some friends if they can help you beat it. Make, make sure that you are the one to soul it, otherwise you're going to lose out on Kamas. So once you get the soul, go straight to Bontar Bragmar, put it in the market and get yourself some easy Kamas. Another thing that you can do is soul dungeons. So I just mentioned the Eternal Harvest quest uh, before. Uh, before you get to the stage where you need the Arch Monsters, you're going to need to soul all of the dungeons as well, up to Borker and Uga. So a lot of people, they buy Arch Monster packs. And these packs do not include the dungeons. So most of the time, they are just either going to soul the dungeons themselves, or if they are lazy, they're going to buy the souls from the market. So if you're the one who is souling the dungeons, then you can put these souls in the market and one of the lazy people like me are for sure going to buy your souls for a good price. Sometimes they go up to like 200 or 300kk. 
Not only the Eternal Harvest quest, but also the Emerald Dover's quest line requires five dungeons. So I just pulled up the Dover's Pool and Noob's website. The five dungeons that you need for the Emerald Dover's quest line are Dragnarius, Bushtash, Cannibal, Nelween, and Warwobot. Some people who are doing these quests might not even want to run on the dungeons, especially the Warwoba dungeon, which requires you to go all the way up to Coward Island. Um, people are usually lazy, just buy these souls if they are not too expensive. Uh, so yeah, if you're the one who wants to make some kamas, go to these dungeons and sell them, sell them in the market and you're gonna get yourself some nice kamas. So another good tip for making kamas is matching low level gear. So the only thing is it requires a little bit of knowledge of the game, knowing what kind of gear people use at certain levels to know that you're not wasting Kamas matching gear that's probably not going to sell. So a good example for this is probably the Aquadala set. It's a chance set that people use on low level. It's always going to sell. The same goes for the other elements as well. So let's say, for example, you want to go to the market and... You're gonna look for the Aquadala boots, for example. The boots only cost 13kk. Um, but yeah, if you go up uh, to the higher amount, so for example, over here, starting at 100kk, you're gonna get the Vitality over mages. Now, obviously, you need some investment um, with leveling your Magus profession, so you need a level 35 shoe Magus. But honestly, the lower levels are not too hard to reach. And runes and the rune prices have started dropping a little bit as well. So if you can get your uh, Megasus to around level 60, for example, you can mage a lot of low level gear. And it's pretty simple. Obviously, it's easier on items that have a high sync value. So for example, if I'm going to look for the blob gear... Uh, let's say the royal blob set which have an ap and a summons on the amulet the amulet is like 40 kk but i think uh yeah when you want to vitality over mage is gonna sell for at least over 100 kk so that's a 60 kk profit and it's probably not even gonna cost you more than 10 or 20 kk now obviously it depends for each item the different values of how much it's gonna make uh, but that's a way to make yourself some kamas. But like I said, it's a little bit risky if you do not know what gear is selling. So if you want to be safe, mate yourself uh, the <laughs> toady set. Uh, it has about 5kk. I don't know uh, if people have vitality over mage this. But at least like 50 or 60 agility is probably going to sell pretty nice. Then you have the weapon as well. And I think the mat over cloak. Uh, uh, it's about 7, 8 kk. And people usually want at least 90 agility. And then probably some vitality over mage. I don't know if there are some here. Yeah, let's see. 60 kk for a 100 vitality over mage. And if you're new to maging. Uh, you might want to wait a little bit. I do have a maging guide planned. I think the epiphany has one on his channel. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he uploaded that a couple of years ago, so it might be outdated. So that's why I plan to make a new maging guide. Uh, especially now since all the Transcendence runes have come to the game. And even returning players might not even know what those are. So stay tuned for that. Um, it probably will come out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, at least in February. But yeah, this is probably a good way of making some kamas. It requires a little bit of investment, but if you're uh, good at maging, you can make a lot of kamas. And we will get back to this at the advanced ways of making kamas. Now, another good way of making kamas is probably crushing. A lot of people are making a lot of kamas as well, but it's a little bit like gambling. You can either make a lot of money or lose a lot of money. Now, there is a way of you to always make money, but that requires a lot of knowledge of the game. So well, first of all, I'm going to quickly show you how the crushing works. So for example, I have here the uh, the ring from the gobble set. It has initiative and vitality on it. You can choose to focus on a stat 
Uh, it will give you only the runes in that single step, but it will give you a lot more runes. Or you can do no focus. So let's do no focus for this one. And you can see here a multiplier. The maximum multiplier possible is probably, I think, 4000%. If you're going to get a high multiplier, you're going to get a lot of runes. That same goes for when you're focus crushing. Now the trick here is to know what people crush. And to know what the value of sync is that an item has. Sync is the value of each rune. So for example, the uh, it's called also... Ankama recently added this to the runes. It's now called density. Back in the days we called this sync. Uh, for this rune is, for example, one. So knowing what kind of uh, item that you have. And what other people would probably crush. Will depend if you're going to make kamas or lose kamas. So for example... If you go to the market and you're gonna look for items that have an AP, MP, range or summon on it. That means a lot of sync. But it also means a lot of people are probably crushing it as well. So it might not even be, even be worth it unless the item is probably super cheap. So you can probably get the most commas from crushing low level items. Uh, when you're gonna get to the higher level items it's gonna be a much of a gamble you either gonna make tens tens of millions of kamas or either lose a lot of so if you look for example for this amulet the recipe is about 7kk the ap runes are definitely more than that so i would probably assume people crush this item so if i'm gonna focus crush on ap runes you see here the multiplier is pretty low and i did not gain any rune so that means a lot of people crush this item and it's definitely not worth it so that's why i suggest people to not crush items that have ap mp summon or range on it and focus on items that have a lot of damage on it maybe even crits critical critical damage or uh, regular damage and have a lot of resistance on it. Those items have a lot of sync on them. And they are less likely to be crushed. Because they don't have AP or NP on them. And they are more likely to have a higher um, multiplier. And give you more runes. Now. When should you focus crush? And when not? If an item has a lot of stats on it. And you want the runes for yourself to mage and level a profession. Do not focus crush. If you are uh, want to mage for profit. And for example the earth resistance runes are pretty expensive at the moment. Compared to the other ones. Get yourself an item that has uh, like 10% earth resistance on it. With a lot of other stats as well. And then focus on the earth resistance. And if you are lucky with a high multiplier. You are going to get a lot of earth resistance runes. And then sell those in stacks of 100 so for example, if I want dodge from this, I'm going to focus crush on dodge. The multiplier is low. On low level items, the multiplier are usually pretty low. Especially on these items because they are dropped from monsters. Um, you also do not want to crush items that are dropped from monsters. Because for example, I have these items in my inventory because I probably dropped them from something. Then I'm always going to crush them because it's not worth selling them. So yeah... These items have a pretty low modifier as well. And there we go. We got an MP rune. That's 20kk there. So if you want to know more about crushing. I highly suggest to check out Defy his channel. He did a Rex to Rich series. Which he probably never completed. But he started out with 10kk. And ended up with millions of commas. Just by crushing items. So check out those videos as well. So tip number 12 is Colosseum. Now most of you guys know you can PvP in Dovefuge, which I'm not even doing. Uh, I, a couple of weeks ago I did some PvP with my Fekka. Uh, but it's pretty boring when you're doing it 1v1. Uh, 3v3 is probably a lot more fun. You can either choose to solo 3v3 or uh, get yourself a group of friends. Or maybe with your own team. Keep in mind when you're doing a 3v3 group fights, you are going to get matched with people who have their own team as well. So these fights are a lot harder than the solo fights. Doing the Colosseum, assuming you are going to win, you're going to get Colo tokens. You can go to the 
Colosseum Temple at minus 13, minus 29. Go to the second room, talk to the NPC. It's going to sell a lot of items, for example, pebbles or pet food that you can then sell for Kamas. You can also use the pebbles yourself to level your professions, like we mentioned before. The last tip that I have for this section is a very boring, very straightforward one, and that is farm mats and i'm not talking about doing dungeons for mats i'm talking about straight up going to an area farm monsters and uh get a lot of mats to sell now i know this way of making commerce is probably the most boring one on this entire list but if you have nothing else to do and you have like a class that has a lot of aoe like a craw or a feca or whatever then you can probably try this out for a uh a little bit every day maybe an hour or so and you could probably get some nice amounts of camas as well so for example if you go to the otomai island and i know for a fact that you have these uh crabs on the beach that sell items with a good amount of value for example these these corals sell for about 5kk each they have a pretty low drop rate but if you can get yourself with a team or maybe solo you go chance with a lot of prospecting on your items. You could probably farm some of these monsters. You have to combine idols as well to even be worth it. Um, not all of them are worth. For example, these are only five, 50 kamas. But the purple ones sell for 5kk. And there's obviously a lot more areas where you can do this from low level areas to high level areas. Certain area um, materials sell a lot quicker than others depending on what kind of gear they, they need. So for example this amulet that I have is pretty standard for a tank panda set. So if you go to the recipes you go and look through all of these. These are obviously boss mats so you don't want to look at those. Uh, then you see that these cannonballs sell for 9kk each. You need about 80 for an amulet, which is pretty quickly 730kk. Which at the moment is, I would consider, pretty low. But that's because the area has been out for quite some time now. But if a new area comes out and just go look at the gear and farm the mats that are over there and sell them in the first couple of days of the release. People are usually just gonna buy that instead of farming it. Now if you go to the encyclopedia, you can click on the resource and see where the monster spawns. So this monster spawns outside of the dungeon as well, so you don't even need to do the dungeon. You can just go around the area with your team, fight the monster, equip yourself some idols and drop these. If you're gonna get a hundred, that's almost one million commas, and it's pretty simple. Now let's go over the advanced ways of making commas. These are the ways that I make commas with, and how I'm constantly running around with hundreds and millions of commas. I even made a video where I reached one billion commas, uh, which was pretty fun to make. Most of the time, I'm running around with like five to six hundred million. Um, which for us, most of you guys watching this video is a lot of money and you probably don't even have 10 million commas but that doesn't really matter because you don't need a lot of commas to be good at the game. I have been playing this game for over 15 years and through time and experience you're gonna get better at the game, you're gonna find more ways to make more commas and be better. Uh, if you're new to the game or a returning player, you just want some ways to make camas, and you have come to the section where you are having a two-man team up to a four-man team, you are pretty decent at beating some dungeons, uh, you have some knowledge of gear and game mechanics, then this section is gonna make you the most amounts of money. And let's start out with buying and reselling gear. So for this, you need some knowledge of the market prices. So for example, the pre-tax is currently sold out. Let's go to the Dofus's pre-tax section. Sort by average price and you're going to see what is expensive. So the iridescent pre-tax, for those of you who don't know, these are a must for PvP. And the only way you can get these is by doing infinite dreams, which will come up in a second. But knowing what the market prices are, constantly checking it for the Dofuses, for the Pretex, maybe even for Exos, but that's a little bit more risky. 
If you're starting out with this tactic, I would highly suggest just keep it with Dovuses and Pretext first. A couple of weeks ago, this Pretext sold for 18 million. Um, I bought two of them. And this week I sold them for 23 million commas. I made 5 million profit for each of them. So that's a total of 10 million profit. Um, you just gotta know when an item is cheap. Actually cheap. And it's probably only going up in price. So at the moment I would highly suggest to not do this until March 1st. Because up until March 1st the prices will be going up. But nobody's going to buy them. Because on March 1st like I mentioned earlier in, in this video. There's going to be a safe day. So everybody's going to stack up the resources. And going to go mass crafting on March 1st. After that the prices are going to drop. So if you plan to buy something. And you want to save yourself some commas, wait until then. The prices will drop. Other than that, um, outside of the special Almanac days, keep an eye on the market. Buy an item when it's super cheap and then resell it if you think it's going to get more expensive. Another good one for this is the legendary items. Um, for example, this belt is 44.5 mil and this one is 48 mil. Then we go 48, 49, 50... So knowing these stats a little bit, knowing what's probably going to sell, what not. Let's say, for example, I open um, I open the shields and the Valence's shield. So let's say I see a shield in here for 17 million. Assuming there's no Transcendence rune on it, I would probably be able to sell it for 5 million more if I'm patient. Now next up is the... XP leeching. Now this one requires a lot of investment, especially since a lot of the good ways have been nerfed over the past couple of years. From the top of my head, the only couple of ways that I know are still possible is the uh, Drossel leeching, which requires a Sacrier, I think. Uh, you can do Nidus leeching, which requires three cross, Endotroph, and Ripsa, with pretty good gear. And there's probably some other ways, but those are maybe a little bit too tricky. These two are pretty straightforward. You can also go and uh, look at an area with a high percentage bonus and probably XP over there. Now, when I say XP leeching, I'm pretty much only talking about Nidus at this moment. Which is the best way of XP leeching at the time of recording this video. You kind of can only do this if you already have the the gear for it so you might might want to change some items but don't invest too much people are usually paying five to seven hundred kk for each run if you can take three leeches that's two million commas for each run that you can do if you can do like three runs an hour that's six million commas per hour which is pretty good commas if you can do it constantly and there are some people who do runs within like 10 minutes they are pretty quickly so most of the leeches, most of the people who want to get leech are probably going to ask the people who are quick. So if you plan to do this strategy and leech people, you better be sure that you are quick. Because if you're slow and you're going to do 30 minutes runs, then you are less likely to find any people who want to join you. Another way of making commas is the achievements leeching. Now I said in the beginning of the video, achievements are the best way of making commas. And with that I mean not only doing the achievements yourself, but also leeching other people. The best way to do this is to practice the level 200 dungeons, knowing the mechanics, and probably try to either solo them or duo them. If you can do that, then you can leech other people. So for example, you have the, the Fantastic Five. A lot of people cannot do those because it's, it's pretty complicated. And if you can do these dungeons with three people, then you can take a fourth person, leech them, and ask them for some commas. People are paying like up to 10 million commas for, I think, Fantastic Five. Then you have other achievements like, um, now we mentioned Nidus leeching uh, a while back. Uh, the Protozora leech, for example. Um, I know some people who are able to solo the dungeon using an Eliotrope, maybe even Hupper Mage. There are probably multiple classes who can do it. And they can do the duo and 200 score together. They ask you like 2 million for each run, but you're going to get the resources as well. So most of the time, the people who pay for the leech don't even lose Kamas. But you 
can make 2 million if you lead someone, so that's pretty nice. There are other dungeons as well, some even harder than the others, like Cthulhu Duo, for example. There are some classes, some people who are pretty good at the mechanics of the dungeon, and they can leave the duo. The resources are 1 million kamas, so people usually ask about 2 million for a leech. If you are able to do that, you can make a lot of kamas, and it's not even boring either, so... Keep an eye on the chat, sometimes people ask, um, I don't know, maybe someone is here at the moment, I can use it as an example. Sometimes, uh... Now this is a good example for the XP leeching, here is someone who can leech at the Protozora area, the area around it. Um, they can leech XP over there, probably using a chance Vekka. They ask for 60kk per fight. Fast fights, and you, it's pretty quick, pretty easy. If you are able to do that, you can make a lot of kamas. Now, here's some guy uh, who's doing dungeon leeching as well. Queen of Thieves first, and Rio tight for 3 million. He's probably doing that then. Cthulhu, like I said, duo and 200 score. He's asking 2.3 million for it. Um, so if you are able to do that as well, you can make a lot of kamas. And it's pretty nice. That's how I personally made a lot of kamas in the early days uh, after I stopped doing the, the plumes thingy. Uh, using a SRAM, I managed to leech Cthulhu Duo and made a lot of kamas with that. Now next up we have the Maging for Profit. Now we mentioned Maging um, earlier before. This one is a little bit more advanced and it requires you to invest heavily, probably losing kamas sometimes. But in the end, you're going to make more. And that is exo maging. If you are able to mage... And I'm talking about uh, good mages. Like, for example, this barbarian wedding ring. The chance and agility are pretty low. But the luck is maximum. So this has some value. But I'm more talking about items like this. So if you can mage items like this, where the stats are near perfect, you can land an AP or MP exo. Which, of course, that part is based on luck. But if you can mage good items they sell for a lot of commas now like i said this method requires a lot of investment because you need runes you need the items but if you can do this pretty regularly and you know how to count sync when to make certain stats over the others then you can make a lot of money i made this amulet myself which the stats are pretty nice maximum lock and it has a 4% water over mage, which is pretty hard on this item because of the uh, different stats it has. It's pretty hard to mage, even though it's uh, with a 2 AP. Um, if you can mage items like this, you can make a lot of money. Um, and like I said before, I will be doing a maging guide soon on this channel. So next up, we have the all-famous Infinite Dreams. At the moment, the only way for me to make Kamas, and that is simply doing the infinite dream. Floor 200 up until floor 400, then reset, do it all over again. You're gonna drop the chests for each floor. The chests have a chance of dropping legendary items. Astro runes, which are used to make transcendence runes. You're gonna drop Prismeridites items, all that kind of stuff. I think even if I go to my Haven bag, I have some of the dream resources over here. So you can drop these. Um, if you're starting out with the dreams, I highly suggest to do some practice runs. Don't add too many bosses on your first run. You're going to get stuck and have to reset too early. Practice the mechanics um, of all of the dungeons, all of the bosses. Even the low level bosses sometimes have mechanics that you don't even know about. Once you finish your run, open the chest and... These insulins usually have the most value because they are used for the pretext that we mentioned earlier that are used for PvP. And if you're lucky enough and you can drop some legends, for example, in the last run that I did, I dropped the Servitude Legend. The belt is worth around 45 million Kama, so that's pretty nice. And not only is Infinite Dreams making a lot of Kamas, it's also a lot of fun to do, especially when you have played most of the game. And you are at the stage where there's nothing much to do. You don't really want to PvP. Infinite Dreams is a challenge. Uh, and it's a cha fun challenge that brings you a lot of commas uh, while you're doing it. 
So next up is the last tip that I have. And then I have one bonus tip. And that is the achievement teams. Now I've done achievement teams multiple times on this channel. You can check out those videos as well. I've, I've made it up to 300 million commas in two weeks time. Now keep in mind that the market prices have dropped a lot since the server merges. And there's no way you can make that much in, in two weeks time now. But that is just to show you guys that it is super easy to do. Now, this requires you to already have a team of four characters with gear. The only thing that you need to do is make four new accounts. Level them to 200. You can either do this yourself if you have the uh, possibility to do so. Or you can pay someone to lead you. There are always people around who can lead you for a good price if you want to lead multiple uh, characters to 200 they do like a a discount uh for that if you get the team to level 200 you're basically gonna put the gear from your main team on that new team i i all all of this i explained in uh i think the video is called a new way of making gammas it's one of the first achievement team videos that i did on this channel i could link it in the description below if i don't forget it but you're basically gonna put all the gear on the new team. You don't even need to scroll it if your gear is good enough. You're gonna make yourself a list from all the dungeons where the resources have some good amount of value. Also, you're gonna do all of the dungeons where you're gonna be able to complete all of the achievements in one run. So, what I mean with that is, for example, uh, Move of Dungeon, where I can't type. Move of Dungeon, you can pretty much do 200 score first and Imper all in one run. And the achievement itself gives 12 kk. And you're gonna get 5. So that's 60 kk. And you're gonna do that on 4 characters. So that's gonna give you 240 kk of raw commas. You're gonna do that for a lot of dungeons. Make yourself a list. You can also message me on Discord. I have the list, I think, somewhere saved. I can link it to you. Uh, the list that I use. You're gonna do all of those dungeons. Depending on how much time you spend each day, you can complete a full run in two to four weeks. Then you're gonna accept all of the achievements. You're probably gonna make around 50, I think 30 to 50 million commas of raw commas from just the achievements. And on top of that, you're gonna get the, the materials that you can sell. Now, you also need to do the wanted quests, the wanted monsters, all of them, especially the high level ones. You're gonna get like over 200,000 doubloons, which you can trade for the scrolls and make a lot of commas with that as well. Selling all the resources gonna take some time, but in the end, you're gonna make up to 200, maybe 300 mil of commas, depending on how many low level dungeons you're gonna add to the list. Back when I did it, I didn't even do Cabal or T Eternal Conflict or Pandala 3. I didn't even do any of those. And I made up to 300 million kamas. So that's, an good, so that's one of the good ways to make kamas, but it requires you to already have a team geared, basically. But if you have that, then this is a very good way of making kamas. Now, as for a bonus tip... <laughs> um, Someone mentioned this yesterday. I saw George, a guildmate of mine. I don't know if he's online. Yeah, he's actually online. He is Omega level 700. So if you need a leech, I don't know if he's still leeching people. So don't pin me on it. But he can leech pretty quickly if you're doing the achievement team. But yesterday he on stream was maging wisdom shields. Now, if you know about maging, there is not a single shield in the game that has wisdom as a stat. And he was trying to get 30 wisdom exo mage on the shield. Now, I can already tell you that's pretty hard. And he told me that there were people who were probably paying up to 100 million kamas for a 30 wisdom shield. So, I'm not suggesting to do this because you can lose a lot of kamas. But if you have a lot of wisdom uh, runes, you can always try to... Spam some raw wisdom uh, runes on a shield. Hopefully three of them crits and you're going to end up with 30 wisdom shield. And if you're lucky and you find the right buyer, you're going to get up to 100 million cameras, which is pretty nice. So if you want that, then you should do that. Uh, it's not a tip that I have. Uh, it's on the list. It's a way. So that's one thing I want to add about the maging. If you're maging 
and somehow you're gonna get a lot of luck and you're gonna land something with perfect stats and an exo and something else be sure to price it at the right amount and you not want to cut yourself short because some if you're actually gonna get a perfect item there's always someone who's spending up to a hundred million on an item like that if it has perfect stats so don't undercut yourself that would be uh, pretty bad um so yeah that's it basically for the ways of making kamas that i have for you guys most of them you probably already heard on some other channel or, pro or probably from me or during my streams or anything else. But it's, it's this simple. These are the ways of making Kamas. And some of them are pretty boring. Some of them are less boring but requires a lot of investment or maybe even gambling. If making Kamas was easy then everybody would be rich and everything would probably be super expensive as well. So yeah, not everybody can be rich. But if you follow these guidelines, start out with the lower tiers of making Kamas. Work yourself all the way to you have like a four-man team. When your four-man team is geared, you can work up to the harder ways of making Kamas. You can start doing infinite dreams. You can start doing XP leeching, dungeon leeching. You can maybe even do achievement teams if you have the time for it. And from that moment on, you're only going to make more and more and more and more. When you get to that amount of Kamas, you can start improving your gear, get even better and better. You never need to pay for subscription. You can just pay with in-game Kamas. And basically from there on, you can just chill, play the game. Uh, like me, I'm doing the Infinite Dreams because I think it's fun. Yes, I'm making money. I'm, I'm, probably, I'm not even making money because I'm keeping the... Uh, the runes and all the gear for myself so i'm not even needing money my subscription is probably running for the next couple of years um so everything that i have now i'm just gonna be invested back into my team gonna maybe even get even better gear and yeah so so start out when you're new with the questing with the achievements then maybe do some low level professions like the farmer and the hunter are doing treasure hunts, wanted monsters, arch monsters, the Suling. Suling is a very good way, by the way. My brother, uh, who was playing solo in like probably the first year, solo account, he did treasure hunting, suit arch monsters, and he was making millions of commas as well as a solo account player without any help. So that's proven to be a right way. The Colo, Colo if you like Colo, do that. You can farm mats, but it's boring. And yeah, like I said, the advanced ways are going to give you a lot of commas, but it requires some investment. So that's pretty much it for this video. I cannot add anything else. If you have any tips on making commas as well that I did not mention in this video, mention them in the comments below. If there is a good way of making commas, I will pin your comments uh, so it will be on the top of the comment section. I will try to... Uh, Put some links that are important in the uh, description below. If you like this video, if it was helpful for you guys, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I think at this point, 64% of you guys who are watching my videos are not subscribed. I am posting pretty regularly. I think at this moment, I, I, I'm pretty safe to say that I'm the only English uh, content creator at the moment who is posting uh, Dofus videos. So if you are regularly watching the videos on my channel, subscribe to the channel. A lot more content is coming your way. Mating guides coming soon. Uh, let's have a little peek of what's coming on this channel. So yeah, we have the mating guide. Uh, we have the. Uh, I'm, I plan to do a new PVM tier list because the other one is pretty outdated. I think I'm doing a class element tier list. Uh, Sounds pretty tricky, but I need to figure out a way how I can make that into a video. I want to show you guys the best gear for each level bracket. So that's going to be a video soon. And if you guys are interested, I can even do a what to do when you're bored in Novus. But that's pretty much going to come down to just do infinite dreams. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, subscribe if you're new. And stay tuned for next video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and bye.